Hello, and welcome to Series 2 of the Game Guru Tutorial. This tutorial series will cover three important elements of Game Guru, the first of which is zones, or levels, or maps, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, you see here the world of Game Guru. Um, the terrain is huge. You could fit a lot on here. I've zoomed out really far so you can see exactly how big it is. If you took something you're familiar with, such as a start marker, and placed it down, it's, it's so small, you can't see it. Burly. Can you imagine this filled with objects and enemies and intelligence and scripts all doing the things that they're doing? It will be untenable. It will be unmanageable. So that's why we can move between zones so we can have levels um, chained together so everything's faster and a lot more neater a lot more neater um, if we start with a blank level I'm just going to demonstrate kind of how it works and then I will go on to showing things you can do to make the most out of the system if you created just some basic terrain just something to give the player something to look at in the test game Okay, just a clump of rock like this. Okay. And then you have um, something going into it. We'll paint the floor. So it's obviously something. You may have a start marker. And at the end, we'll place down a wind zone. Which are in markers. Uh, zones, wind zone. Now, if you followed series one, you saw that we put one of these inside the science bunker, just inside the door. Now, rather than use that level for demonstration purposes, I figure I'll just do this because it'll be easier to follow and understand what's going on without being distracted by all the other things in the world. So, basically, I've placed down a wind zone. I've stretched the sides out to fit the area because the player will traverse this ravine and at some point get to the end. Now here there may be a cave or a door or a teleporter or something that will take us to another level. Okay, so that's what I have here and I will save that. Now I, if I wanted to I could do something similar to this in another part of this massive open world and have the player teleport from one zone to the other zone to sort of transition between scenes but it's a lot more efficient to go to a completely different level because the less a world scene has to do the faster everything becomes so if we save this as um, tutorial 2.2 so we've got two worlds exactly the same. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this second map so when the player transitions, it's obvious we've traveled between maps. Maybe this side with some grass. Okay. And I could take this, get rid of that now, take this oops, and move it here. So in the earlier level you went into a cave and in this level you'd be coming out of a cave. So I shall save that as tut underscore two underscore two. Now the name is important here because to chain maps together you don't have to um, compile them all into a master list it's all done in engine in script and you don't even have to mess with the actual script to get this to work if we go back to our first level just to say first no I've, I've just saved so um, if we go back to our first level and click on the wind zone and hit properties 
We see the name of the zone is called WinZone. The AI system has a main script, winzone.lua. If used, is blank, and the sound is a standard sound trigger. If we entered this zone, in fact, we can, we can actually just enter the zone, you can see. We'll test the game. We should be very quick to load, there's nothing in this scene, just a bit of um, terrain. So we walk along the path, and we get to the wind zone, and the text at the bottom says level complete triggered. Okay? But we want to go somewhere. We want to go to the other level that we created. So if we go into the properties again, and under if used, type in the name, word for word, of the level that you want to go to is called. In this case, it's tut underscore two underscore two. And apply those changes. And then save. Now, you would need to you wouldn't need to compile a master list of all the levels in your game you would that would be compiled automatically because of every zone that goes to another zone it's kind of all linked together and saved like that so as a user it's very easy to chain levels together you simply drop in a win zone and give it a target level and it the software will do the rest however you can't test game to test those links those links only work on a standalone so we are also today going to build a very simple standalone and we should do this now okay so in order to build a standalone game this is very simple you go to the top menu system under file left click and find save standalone left click it'll ask do you want to save first again you can i know i have just saved so i don't need to save and it will load up a dialog box with a um, the file path where you want the standalone game to be saved. The question mark means you've not specified a destination, so we'll specify that now. You can change that. Um, I'm currently I'm pointed to my map bank folder, and I'll, I'll do it here. It doesn't really matter that much. Make a new folder and call it tut2, one. Okay, and then select that folder. And the absolute file path you just selected will appear in this box. Absolute file path means it contains the uh, drive letter and all the folders to get to the eventual folder. Um, once you're happy that that's in the right place, you can click Save Standalone. You click that, it will, it will do everything that it needs to do to build your game including all the objects you've placed down, all the scripts that you might have made, all the levels that you've linked to. In this case, there's only two levels. Um, it will wrap all those up together into an executable file. It will encrypt all the assets you've used, so they're nice and safe. And it will allow you to give this file, this, this folder, to other people, and they can run it on their computers and play your game. They don't need to have GameGuru installed. They don't even need to know what GameGuru is. Um, they could run it so you can give your game to friends to play or family um, process completes 100 percent it will load the test level again um, and allow you to carry on editing your game but what this will have done it will have created a folder structure in the place that we just specified which in my case was a map bank folder so if we go there now so we're here now um, as you can see, the absolute file path, as we specified, tut2 underscore 1. And we have a folder here called tut underscore 2 underscore 1. This name is derived from the level you was on when you built your standalone game. There's no way to specify, there's no, this is how you specify where your game starts. So you must go to the first level and save the standalone from that level. Because if you do it on the last level, it will start on the last level, at the start marker. So if you go into there, you'll see that the executable is also called the name of the level you saved the executable. So um, while I'm using a tutorial abbreviation, in your games you might want to use something a little bit more descriptive. Um, but all these files, you don't need to worry about them. The only thing you need to worry about is this file here, tut underscore one 
I'm just going to go under EXE. If you double click, you will start your game. Even though currently our game is only a road leading into a very unrealistic mountain, it's still your game. Um, if you wanted to insert a custom logo, well, there's the path to change the artwork. Um, ah, okay, so we have start, load, about, and quit. Quit obviously exits. About, you can find out about the game, which we will cover later. Load, to load a save game, of which we have none. And start, so we start, and it loads the player from the start marker from the level you saved your standalone. And so we'll appear on our dusty road, looking at an unconvincing mountain. Now we know that there's a start, there's a wind zone there. The player can't see it, it's invisible. But if you remember the test game we entered, it said level complete, level progress complete. Now if we enter it, it will exit this level, a load tut underscore two underscore two, because that's what was specified in the FPE, and start from that level. So, oh, I turned you. No, I don't. Uh, sorry about that. I have several programs running in the background. Um, so this is the next level. Now this level had a start marker, but no wind zone, so we will be trapped on this level forever. We can, of course, save our game. And if you try to load, there it is. So, exit, um, main menu, and quit. We're back here. Now, one more thing I want to add is if you introduced a wind zone, and in the properties, if you left this blank, upon entering this zone in the standalone game, you will win the game. It will it will end. Um, that's like the ultimate destination. Um, so if there's no if used, it will end. So that kind of covers the basics. Next time, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the script itself and little tricks you can use to make your game uh, dynamic and interesting. Um, so please do uh, um, check out the next video once it's released. It should be announced. And if there's anything specific you'd like to see about wind zones or transitioning between zones or anything really, uh, do leave a comment. I will try and get to it um, in one of the subsequent videos. And thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time.